and welcome once again to another fantastic tutorial. My name is Dr. Wasabi and today we're doing something a little bit different. The, uh, well, as of this recording, the snapshot for the new Deep Dark Cities have released. So in honor of that and obviously the new experimental uh, snapshot that has come to Bedrock, I have provided for you 10 designs that will be great for this upcoming update we go over everything from decorational builds to um uh, small starter bases in the deep dark everything you need um in the coming months when the uh, update actually releases well not in the coming months but you, you get what i mean a bit of a uh, prediction uh, so to speak so let's get on with the task at hand so i have 10 10 builds to show you, 10 builds, there's a little uh, little preview before we uh, uh, begin, but before I do anything, I just want to say, if you do like what I do, if you do like my video, please like it and subscribe, because it means a lot, it sends my channel amongst the algorithm, and it sends my content to you amazing, fantastic people, so, let's begin. So, for build number one, we have a collection of frog eggs. Now, you may be wondering, Wasabi, why would you have this for your build? I just think this is an excellent use of um, of the new frog lights. So, we've got here our... Oh, there we go back into a <laughs> regular view. One second. There we go. We have ourselves our verdant frog light, and of course we have the addition of tadpole eggs, but if you want to have something a bit more decorational, you want to add something to your swamp or your marshland, then this is a great addition, because it just lights up the place. For one, it stops mob mobs from spawning, and for two, it just looks like a, a great little detail to your kind of swamp biome. I wouldn't recommend building this anywhere else, because obviously it is very linked to the swamp and the marshland and the frogs. You could uh, put a few frogs in here, let's see if we can uh, find a egg. But where is it? Here we go, here we go. So you can put down some frogs, like so. Maybe it's uh, their breeding ground, so to speak. So. This is just a great kind of environmental decoration you can use. Obviously, a lot of people won't want to do environmental decorations, which um, which is why we'll go on to, uh, well, build number two. And we are back with build number two. Now, this is a bit more fun uh, use of the frog lights. We have ourselves some pearlescent frog light, we have some verdant frog light, and we have ochre frog light. And what I've done with this is I've made some balloons of them. And it's a very simple design, all you need is some either end rods or just glass, stained glass, whatever you want as long as it's these kind of blocks. These make great balloons folks and they light up your spaces so if you want to have like a celebration in your Minecraft world and, and you've got these blocks these are great because you can just plop them down in a collection, put some presents around them and uh, you know you're, you're good to go. It is a great um, decorational block in my opinion. Uh, of course, you can use this in walls, in, in, in interior spaces. I, I just think it's a great uh, build in general. But again, these are balloons. Uh, I've got some lovely presents around here. Some red wool, some uh, white wool, and some blue wool, along with some uh, magenta wool. <laughs> so yeah, these are very... Um, uh, well, what's the word? Um, pastel, yes, that's the word. Pastel color palettes. Um, this is like a lime. This is more of a, like a pink what whitish pink obviously it's pearlescent and of course this is an ochre which is a very light uh, yellow shade so that is build two of the balloons okay we are on to build number three now this is more of an interior arrangement here folks what i've done i made a room space i've used the ochre uh, frog lights as a complement to the wallpaper itself so this is excellent this is color coordinated lighting which is uh, something that we've not seen in minecraft yet uh well I, the exception of that being with the new shaders but that isn't coming for i would say a, a decent chunk of time so what you can do um if you've got a big room you need to fill up with light or have some nice color coordinated uh color schemes going on what you do now this goes with uh, any colors that kind of go with the frog lights so if you want a green room you put in the verdant frog light if you want a yellow room you put in the ochre frog light and of course if you want like a, like a pinkish white uh, wallpaper you put in the pearlescent frog light this is great it's a brand new kind of um layer to your interior build which i think will uh, <laughs> serve many builders very well in the coming updates so that is build number three 
Okay, we are on to build number four. Now, this is a great use. We are now introducing the Skulk blocks, which obviously will be added uh, along with the Deep Dark Cities. Now, I haven't noticed this before, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but this is very similar to um, Rob Prismary. Let me, just, let me just get it out. I'll tell you why. Because much like this uh, block, let me just get it out. Uh, where is it? Yes, yeah, the Prismarine... Um, in its raw form, it changes color. You can just see, um, as I'm talking, it, it shifts. Um, the, the skulk, it shifts around and it's a wonderful pearlescent, um, not pearlescent, bioluminescent, that's the word, bioluminescent manner, which I think is great for wallpapers. It's great. It doesn't work on the floor. Now, for this, I'm using um, a skulk catalyst, which is what you want to use if you're using this as a, a carpet or something like that. But for wallpapers, you'd use the regular skulk and it looks amazing. It, it looks like you're in a planetarium and the, the entire dome's like covered with this stuff. It, it would look like the night sky, which I think is a fantastic uh, build. Color palette wise, I would recommend um, just keeping with the kind of skulk uh, color palette. So lots of grays, lots of blues, m maybe some cyan because there's a hint of green uh, in there. Um, however, you don't want to be too um, li liberal of that because um, it will overpower the build. Now, I'll show you what to actually use of this wallpaper in build number five. Okay, we are at build number five where we are actually putting this into practice in an actual interior build. So what I've done, I've made myself a little arcade using the Skull Catalyst as a lovely retro carpet. And full of wallpaper itself, I've used a gold and grey concrete design. Now, full of gold. Uh, again, this, this goes with the colour coordination I was talking about earlier. You can put the frog lights in if it goes with the colour and it just works so well. It's like hidden lighting, folks. Obviously, you can still see it, but it just blends into the wallpaper so well that it, it just works. <laughs> uh, to quite a famous uh, uh, game developer. But... We have put ourselves some uh, arcade cabinets down. Not nothing too uh, detailed, but you can tell it's such a vibrant use of colours. A lot of people though will be um, wouldn't like the use of uh, these bright colours contrasting with the skull carpet. So if you want, you can keep the colour uh, palette very similar to this. Again, that's the beauty of Minecraft. It is up to you. So that is build five. A wonderful arcade room with the score catalyst as carpets so let's get on to build number six and we are here with build number six now obviously you did have a preview um, at the start of the video but what essentially this is is a skulk tree uh, yes i've used um acacia wood to kind of contrast well against the uh, cobble deep slate because this is a deep dark build there are quite uh, a few over here which you will show in time but what i've done here is i've elevated the platform slightly to give the kind of um indication that the roots have pushed up the floor of the city itself uh, to make this tree and i think it's such a a grand use of um oh is that Oh, <laughs> the frogs are, are hopping into different places. But as I was saying, I think it's such a good use of uh, color contrast because the deep dark is a very um, monochromatic uh, area. You've got loads of grays, lots of dark blues, lots of... Um, um, it, it's almost a bit um, space horror-esque, if you, if you understand my, uh, my saying, because it's got these really weird color palettes, but it's really drained as well, which I think is such... Uh, I think it is a unique uh, color palette in and of itself because we haven't seen this before in Minecraft. So I think this is a really good opportunity for builds and builders to actually experiment with this, see what they come up with. And of course, that this is what I have come up with. I have actually used um, black stained glass to um, add some, I don't want to say depth to the build, but obviously it does help because you don't want to add one thing to a tree that would make it boring. So I added some uh, some black stained glass as a secondary kind of block to add. But overall, I think this has gone well. I really like the kind of ruined-esque uh, build style of this. It reminds me of Dark Souls um, a lot. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone else is getting that vibe. But one more thing I want to add. Uh, this is um, great if you want to actually renovate a ruins deep dark city and um, one thing that i would recommend is the light gray wool 
because it does stop Sculpt sensors from actually noticing you and the uh, well I'm pretty sure the warden will be able to climb out of some of these uh, Sculpt blocks so do be careful of that so that is build number six Okay, we are now at build number seven with something a bit more ramshackle, folks. So this is supposed to um, replicate the kind of structures that you will see in the deep dark cities. It's it's almost like an abandoned castle in that regard. Not exactly an ever, a never fortress, um, but it does have a lot of these rooms, winding corridors and battlements everywhere. So what I've done, I've made myself a little deep dark city camp with all the uh well all the luxuries a explorer will need you got yourself a chest you got yourself some brewing stands an anvil for uh, enchanting armor obviously an enchantment table table for when you need it a bed for sleeping and some cobwebs now what's well, why are you adding cobwebs to this build now um this in theory is to stop mobs especially the warden if he does actually see you because um, this is supposed to be a representation of an outpost rather than an actual home, which I will actually show in our last build. But what this essentially is, is to stop the Warden from charging up to you. Now, I don't know if this will actually stop the Warden, obviously, because the snapshot says for and released. So, fingers crossed, um, I won't be condemning players <laughs> to be devoured by the Warden. But um, what we've done, um, I've really kind of added to that outpost vibe. So... That the player itself has like built doors around the battlement openings and put cobwebs around them maybe it's like to signify barbed wire to keep all, this, all the uh, enemies out or the mobs and or, there is a strong use of soul fire in the deep dark cities so i've gone with that theme as well i've added the uh, the soul lanterns and of course a soul campfire and it just it just adds to the the whole color palette which is the kind of the key thing to do in the deep dark city because it's exactly that the deep dark city it's dark it's it, it's it's damp it's a bit depressing because <laughs> you got a monster hunting you uh, half the time so i think this is a really good uh, start to build for anyone who is essentially exploring the deep dark city and wants to kind of start things off uh, small and then uh, build up accordingly so that is build number seven and we are well <laughs> right next to build number seven we've built number eight and this is a mangrove outpost as the uh, we did get the trailer for the wild update it was showing the particular mangrove formations that we would be exploring so i thought it really um uh well quite interesting if i actually played on this and made an outpost using the kind of tree designs that they made so what i've done i've made three um well four exactly uh three kind of wooden branches kind of sprouting out the ground forming this kind of pillar uh, which holds the tree up and i've got a center uh, pillar in the middle to give ourselves the ladder and of course the tree some uh, well some <laughs> stability and i've also added the verdant frog lights which i think is going to be really important in these kind of builds because uh, i i assume this is where it's going to come from so it would look almost perfect in this situation like so so we're going to go up here and it's nothing it's nothing luxurious it is exactly that is just an outpost where you can have some supplies uh, a bed to sleep in some chest for storage and of source of, of, of source of course uh, a furnace to cook in i just love uh, making these sort of builds because it, it's so down to earth and um i don't want to say rustic but um, it has that kind of survivor-esque feeling around it now the reason for the the blue uh, the light blue carpet is that in swamps at least um to this snapshot the one flower that does uh grow is the blue orchid uh so i've kind of gone with that theme of the blue because essentially you're using the materials you have at the time and i think well, i want to really hit that point home with these kind of uh, color arrangements so i have um a quick note just before we uh, leave from build number seven eight and um, is that this is supposed to be mud obviously mud is not in the game yet so i've used a uh, tough to kind of signify that because during the trailer when they're exploring mangrove there is a lot of this stuff there's kind of mud along the banks and uh, stuff like that and of course um you will be using uh, mangrove wood 
instead of Oakwood, uh, obviously Mangrove Wood is not in the game yet. So this is more of a, um, I would like to say, a concept development of what um, potential outposts could look like. Again, this is just to help you on your travels when the update comes out. I think this is look it looking really good. I think the vines itself really gives it that kind of tangly, uh, murky kind of feel that the swamps give off, which I think is a really uh, a, well, good indication, in my opinion. So that is build number eight. And we are back with build number nine. Now this is a bit of a step down from the, well, the mangrove outpost, but I think this is really um, important for kind of side decoration and, and, and set layouts. So this is um, my representation of a mangrove path. So what essentially you'll do is um, imagine there's a big kind of lake where you are, like uh, most swamps is like one block tall. So you add a little dirt path uh, by brazing one block up and you add these wonderful little uh, poles which you've added. And these have uh, frog lights, it's like lanterns with, uh, held up by rope. I think this is a really, um, it's a very simple build, but I think it adds so much in that respect. It almost looks like, um, um, uh, like a bayou home. Uh, in, in that regard, you've got these wonderful kind of decoration lamps. I think the same uh, shape and um, vibe could be given if you just put in lanterns. But I think this is just for those who just want to have a change of uh, pace when it comes to decorationals and, and things like that. Because it just adds so much more... Um, well, I don't want to say panache, uh, but obviously it adds some personality to the build itself. And of course, these are going to be found in the mangroves and the swamps, as I, I said um, uh, when I was talking about the mangrove outpost. So it, it seems almost logical that you you use these uh, as your uh, kind of decorational items in the, in the swamp itself. So I really can't wait to see what people uh, do come up with these, because I think um, obviously with new blocks, you are just opening Pandora's box. and Wait, that, that rhymed! <laughs> anyway, I'm jibber-jabbering too much. That has been build number nine. And we are here, the last build of our, well, <laughs> our wild update collection so far. This is the deep, dark home. Yes, are you tired of the warden hunting down your every location? Are you, are you tired of not having a, a, a safe place to stay in that accursed deep dark city? Well, I have just the thing for you. This is a deep dark home. Very, very simple to make. It's almost like a village house in that in that regard. Uh, it's literally a cube using deep slate bricks, deep slate tiles, um, a few uh, more foreign elements that you'll have to go uh, up in the overworld to get. But as long as you have the supplies, this is very easy to make. So this is a wonderful uh, starter home for anybody who is, well, sick of uh, setting up camps like that um, in the deep dark city. And just want to have some place to stay and recuperate and build up materials while they're kind of uh, clearing out the city itself. So this is a very cozy kind of home. Um, obviously no windows because uh, windows are objects of which arrows can be shot through. So this is to provide maximum safety um, while kind of also having a, uh, a taste of home, so to speak. So you have your furnace for cooking food. You have your storage, some, uh, some decorational bookshelves. A table with uh, candles. Now, the Deep Dark City, to my knowledge, has a a ton of candles, so um, you won't be <laughs> lacking anytime soon. Uh, we also have some anvils for upgrading armor and some brewing stands for brewing potions. Now, obviously, uh, light gray wool is a necessity if you want to kind of, um, well, I would say achieve maximum safety because, of course, the Skork sensors. But if you've cleared them out already, then that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now, this is a great build, in my opinion. It has a lot of personality, even though it's just a cube. Because you've got these little, uh, these little widgets to the side where you can put stuff. And, um, it, perhaps if you're feeling a bit more confident, you can put storage outside. Uh, perhaps some uh, wood or materials from the overworld. Things like that. And if we go up top, there's a little ladder here. This is a kind of archery practice area. So you could, well, if you're feeling under threat, you could literally go up here and start taking pot shots at the local mobs 
and kind of uh, <laughs> ensuring your safety from the deep dark entities that live below. And one more thing I wanted to say is that we've got this wonderful uh, soul fire lamp which we've made here. Now this was actually inspired to me from Destiny 2. Um, if you go to the moon on that game, there's, there's these wonderful kind of uh, HR Geiger lamps where it, it's literally like so gothic and, and so um, uh, brutalesque. I found it a perfect kind of um, inspiration to build one of these. And to be fair, they look pretty good. Um, especially because I didn't want to do it on both sides because that'll look too parallel. And this is supposed to represent this kind of, not ramshackle, but a hastily put together home. Uh, and I think it's that that gives it such soul. Uh, well, literally, <laughs> in this case, <laughs> with so much personality. And I hope you do like it. So that has been 10 things. Well, you can build in the uh, wild update this was a really uh, fun thing for me to do obviously with the new blocks I, I really got my brain going making new designs for you folks i do hope you like it if you do like what i do i do uploads every weekends and live streams when i can every weekdays your support means the world to me so please like this video and subscribe to my channel because every like and every subscription sends my channel amongst the algorithm and sends my content to you amazing, just fantastic people. My name has been Dr. Asabi. I want to wish you the best, uh, the best night. Good night, folks, of course. And as always, God bless. And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.